Hey everybody, it's Mark with Old Soul Farm. Today, I'm gonna show you how to make this chicken water. It's a little bit lengthy of a video, but if you hang in there, I promise it'll be worth it. So we're gonna start with one section of one inch Schedule 40 PVC pipe. Should be able to get it at pretty much any hardware store. And here's the layout for pretty much the rest of the hardware you're gonna need. You need a one inch cap for one end. You need a one inch to three quarter inch threaded adapter, which is right here. You'll need a ball valve shut off and three quarter inch uh, as everything else that standard garden hose that you can pick up at any hardware store. This is a double female connection. Uh, you'll see later on in the video I ended up not using this but I figured I'd leave it in there and I think it's just a manufacturing item that was deficient. And this is our coupling that we're going to use for our reservoir and that is also three quarter inch. Some other stuff you're gonna need is a one inch paddle bit or a hole saw. That'll come in handy with installing that. Um, PVC cement, if you decide to use it, we did. And this is a three eighths inch bit. The reason we're using this one, as you'll see here in just a second, is uh, the horizontal nipples that we're using, that's what they call for. So. Depending on which nipples you end up ordering, they may change uh, from the manufacturers. So I would just caution you when you're doing that. Here you can see what the horizontal nipples are. There's actually a spring in there. So whenever you push on it or when the chicks push on it, that plunger goes out. And you can see that piston move out. Here I'm showing you that it's 3 8 inch. So if you're not sure, just find a bit that's closest and it'll kind of thread on. To kind of give you an idea as to how these things work, I put it on a spare piece of pipe. You can see it sits fairly flush there. And whenever they peck at the plunger, it opens it and there's a little O-ring on the back. Whenever they release it, it closes off the water flow. So that's what it will look like on the inside where the water is. And you can see at the base of my finger there that um, there is a bit of a lip. So if the water's sitting there, instead of dripping down onto the ground and making a big muddy mess, it'll just sit there. So one thing we have to figure out with this PVC pipe, uh, it's about six feet. And that's going to fit on the back wall or the side wall of the chicken tractor. It's not uh, really that big a deal where you decide to mount it. But for us, I think we're going to try the back wall. Um, so what we did is from the end, we just measured in five inches and every five inches down, I just made a little tick mark and that's where the horizontal nipples are going to go. Now I do have a drill press, but it's old and it needs some work. So I'm just going to use the hand drill and the three eighths inch bit, but to make sure every one of these is lined up with each other so we have a nice um, straight line when we're going down. I marked out every five inches as we go like I already said and then I just took my speed square and rolled the pipe and made my first line right there by doing that and then when I had my next line here I just line up this right side make my mark on the left side I move down to the next one. That way it's going to be a nice uniform line on down the pipe. Now the speed square has lots of uses, but this isn't one they tell you in the book. I'm just going to use that to hold down so the pipe doesn't roll. 
and uh, you can see I'm just putting a little bit of downward pressure on it and as I drill just keep moving so we get done with all of them. So here we have our 3 8 inch hole drilled into our 1 inch pipe. We have our horizontal water nipple. And you see how it's graduated as it goes closer to where the water actually sits on the pipe. So we have a round pipe and a flat waterer, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and put that in and it's threaded so now we'll just give it a couple turns and you can see as we go it's getting tighter and it'll get down to a point that it's a little too hard to turn by hand and we're just about there So there it's sitting flush. Let's level that out a little bit. And there you have it. We'll get the rest of these put in. All these other holes and show you how straight I got it. Now, I don't think that looks too bad. It's fairly straight, and honestly, I don't think the chickens are going to care one way or another. But it does work to keep them nice and straight. Now we're going to go ahead and put on the end cap. And there it's on without glue. Now it's on with glue. Just in case you don't know how to glue up PVC, I'll show you here in a second. Put glue on that side. You don't put it on the threaded side. Once glue's on, smush them together, and there you have it. Just in case you missed it, put glue around the outside of this one and the inside of this one. Smush them together, and as you're smushing them together, you give it just a little turn, and you'll be good. And here it is all glued up. So the next piece we're going to work on is the bucket. Um, for the bucket, I'm going to use a gamma lid. If you don't know what a gamma lid is, um, it snaps on just like a regular lid, but then it unscrews. It makes it easier to get in the bucket on a daily basis. So the nice thing is for this, we know we're going to be getting into it at least twice a day and filling it up. So we have other buckets just like this. And what makes it really nice is the kids can unscrew that lid by themselves, fill it up with water, put the lid back on. Instead of trying to worry about snapping it, go out, unscrew it, dump it into this one, and they're set. A lot less waste and a lot less spilling. Next thing we have to think about is when this is hanging. It's going to be hanging, right? So our side outlet for the water should be in line with the handle. And the other thing is we have to think about these buckets. There's about the bottom, so when you go to drill your hole, you're gonna make it just a little bit higher so we can put, so we can put this in. So here I've drilled a pilot hole. 
just to make sure I'm good to go. I've measured up to make sure that my one inch paddle bit there isn't going to go into the very bottom uh, of the bucket so we don't have any leaks. Um, but you just take your paddle bit or hole saw, make your one inch opening, and then install the hardware. All right, now that the hole's drilled, we can install the hardware. And the technical name for this is a bulkhead fitting. So if you go to a store or if you're gonna buy it online, just look for a bulkhead fitting. And the big thing is with any of this, you can scale it up and do a huge project like this. Just make sure that all your connections fit. You don't have to use a one inch pipe. You can use a five inch pipe. You can use you know a larger size hose. You can use quick connects. It really doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Just I find this easier since we already have garden hoses laying around. So you can see I'm taking that male end, putting it in through the inside, and just kind of, since it's threaded, screwing it in there, making sure that your O-ring is on the outside and the inside, and putting on this female side. Tighten everything up, and I'll show you both sides of it just so you can ensure that you have your O-ring in the correct place. So here's what the inside looks like. You can see how far it is off the bottom, so you're always gonna have a little bit left in there. And there's the O-ring. They need to make sure it's on the inside or else it's gonna leak. And here's what the outside looks like with the O-ring there. And just in case the really analytical people wanna ask, here's a measurement on the inside and here's one of the outside so you can use that as you see fit now we're going to take our quarter turn ball gate or ball valve and in case you've never seen the inside of one there's the ball with a hole in it and when you turn the handle it closes it off or opens it so i'm putting it on the bucket that way if we need to disconnect the hose or anything um, it's easier for us plus it's up where you're going to be filling so to me it seems a little bit easier than keeping it on the other end now i'm going to start making the hose um, you could just use a regular hose but it would be entirely too long so i went and bought just some food grade uh, tubing that would match up with the correct couplings so like i said before we're using uh, three quarter inch couplings and you can order these in a couple packs you just need to make sure you get the, the correct connection. So here's a female connection with the O-ring right there. And the first one we have down here is the male coupling. So you can see we have to get it into the hose and then we'll put the uh, hose clamp on there. And I'll show you a couple tricks to do that. Trick number one. You need hot water in your cup and you just take the one end that you're going to be inserting the coupling into and just soak that hose for you know as long as you need to to make it a little more pliable and then you just slowly work on the coupling some of them go on really easy some of them it takes quite a while yeah my first one it took me quite a bit because I didn't realize how long you ought to let it soak so uh, it all depends on how hot your water is and how warm it is outside so you see me struggling here for a little bit 
but I do end up getting it on. And I will caution you, if you leave your water, as you can see mine back there, on your work area, just make sure you don't knock it over because it'll make a mess on your workbench. Not that I know, but it could happen to anybody. And here we've just about got it, so I'm going to soak it a little bit longer just to make it a little bit more pliable to get the whole way down to the end. Give it one more good push, and it should be about there. All right, there it matches up with the end. And you slide up your hose clamp. You might have to loosen it up a little bit to get it on there more easily. And you take it almost to the very end, but not quite up to the brass connection. So you see how there's just a little bit of a space there. And then you simply just tighten it up. All right, now when we're getting ready to do the other end, the important thing is to remember to put your hose clamp on first. Uh, you can get it on afterwards, but it's a little bit more of a pain to do it. So you just slide it back down to the other end so it don't slide off and start soaking your hose again. After you soak it, you slide it on and you can see that it, this is the female connection. So it's gonna be just a little bit different and you'll see that I have a bit of an issue when I get to a certain point because that coupling does move on you. So here I have it down to that coupling and I still have all that play, but whenever I push, I can't get it in any further. So what you have to do in that case is get the male connection to put it in there to take up all that slack and push it on. So here I'll show you how to do that. And there you have it. The hose is the whole way up to the end of the coupling. We'll take off the male connection. It still spins freely. You want to make sure that that part does spin. And since we already put our hose clamp on, we just have to slide it up the hose, tighten it down, and we'll be ready to go. And with any female connection, you have to make sure you have that O-ring in there or it's not gonna work. One thing I didn't show was putting the double female connection that I showed you earlier on the end of it, of the water, but here it is. So you take your male connection we just made up and put it to the double female. And then you take the other end, which is a female section of the coupling and put it directly onto the ball valve which is up to our reservoir in the bucket. And here we have the whole shebang laid out. I put it on paper towels so that we could see even if there was just a small minuscule leak, we would be able to tell right away instead of having to worry about looking around on the concrete. So this is the whole system. We're going to get it hooked up, fill it with water. Magic. Currently, there's no leaks. I haven't turned the ball valve on yet, but I just want to make sure there's nothing going down the hose from turning on or from filling the bucket. And I don't see any. So we'll go up here. We'll open the ball valve and see what happens. You can see the water starting to flow. 
And immediately we have a leak at the double female. We did double check and make sure that the O-rings were in there and they were. So we're going to have to try to figure out what's going on because it just keeps leaking. But we look at the rest of it. That's all filling with water. Still, uh, it's not leaking that much. So uh, we're looking down here. We don't notice any other leaks. So that's good. That means all of our nipples are secure. And this just keeps getting worse. So we're going to get that fixed. So this is the piece that's leaking. There's good O-rings in there, gaskets. Um, so I'm not really sure why it's acting up on us. But that connects to our male connection. And in all reality, I guess looking at it, um, that's a lot of unnecessary length um, when I have a spare female connection. So what I'm going to do is take off this male connection, get rid of these pieces, and put on my spare female connection. And it should cut down on length, and it cuts down on so many gaskets um, potential to leak because... This one is from the exact same batch, and we didn't have a problem with that leaking at all. So there's no reason this one should. So I'm going to get that done, put it back together, and then we'll water test it again. Okay, this is the old one. We have the new one switched out. We'll get everything connected and try it again. Okay, so we still have water in here, and there's no water leaking from this connection, so we did that right. We have our quarter turn ball valve, that's not leaking. We have our female going into the male part of that, that didn't leak, and that was the same one that was connected, so that's not the new connection. We have our hose going down. This is where our double female was. We replaced that with just another single female to match up with the PVC male. And then we have the rest of the water down there. So I emptied everything of water, dried everything off, put our paper towel back down, and we're going to test it out again. All right, we're going to turn the water on and see what happens. We should be able to see it come in the clear hose. And hopefully that's the last place we see it. There, the water's coming in. So far, so good. I'm going to elevate this just a little bit because when it's actually in the chicken tractor, it's going to be elevated just to make sure there's no air bubble at the bottom down there. So I think our fix worked. Luckily we ordered extra. Okay, so now we're going to purge all the air. And there's our water. So that one works. The rest of these should just start coming out with water right away. All right, you get the idea. In theory, the rest of those should work too. And we still don't have a leak at our new connection. So I think we're ready to install. All right, so we're gonna install everything. So we just have our J-hook screwed into the back of the chicken tractor uh, reservoir with our quarter turn. And then Catherine's in there. We're trying to get the height right for right now. So all I did to get the hose out from the inside is made a cut right here. And I'm gonna fold this in and down. That way there's no sharp edge on the hose. And then feed the hose through. And 
and then we'll make this connection and we'll make some adjustments. All right, so there the bucket's hooked up. The hose comes down through the mesh. We got it hooked up and if you see, when you stand back, it's going down just a little bit of an angle just to make sure that there's no air pockets down through here. That'll make the water nipples not be able to work. And then um, obviously it goes up again. So we brought out a little test dummy to make sure it was gonna be the right height. All right, now we're gonna put the tarp on and get it into position so we can move the chicks out sometime. Well, I hope everybody enjoyed the build portion of this uh, video. As you can see, we put it in the chicken tractor that we also have uh, build videos out on. So if you haven't checked those out, go ahead and uh, take a look at those. And this also works for other types of chicken tractors. So that's the nice thing about this. It's a versatile system. You can kind of move it around. But as you can see, the chicks are already out here pecking away and figured out how to get it going. So it should keep them nice and happy and healthy. And as always, thanks for stopping by.